So here I'm going to show the cost and product curves that I cover in my Principles of Microeconomics class. I've got this chart with some numbers. These four columns in black are the ones that I've made up. Every other column is derived using the formulas down here. And then all of the uh, graphs over here are actually using the answers in the Excel columns. So these should match to what you might see plotted out in a book, but these use the actual numbers based here. So the numbers I made up are basically adding workers from 1 to 10 constantly. You know, this is the number of labor inputs. And then I've got total output, and then this is made up. It starts at one worker produces 10, and it ends with 10 workers produce 90, but you can see it does not rise by a constant amount. That's because of diminishing returns. All right, I skip zero because you can't divide. Um, but I've got a straight, straight, uh, constant in increments input, but changing amounts of output. Okay. Now over here, I've got $50 fixed cost. So that's constant. It doesn't, that's independent of the number of workers. That's why it's a fixed cost, but every worker gets $10. And so it increases by 10 each time. All right. So those are the numbers I made up. These are the formulas. The average product is quantity out of output divided by quantity of inputs. So it's going to be Q over uh, the total labor. Marginal product is change in quantity or in you know marginal product. Um, it's going to be change in quantity, but it's divided by one worker each time. Okay, so th th this is going to be divided by one, but it doesn't always have to be that way. Right? Total cost is total fixed, and sometimes I call this just fixed cost or FC. But total cost is total fixed plus total variable. Um, average divides everything by Q. So all three components get divided by Q, so average total cost is divided by Q is the sum of fixed cost, average, fixed cost over Q or variable cost divided by Q. And then finally, marginal cost is change in total cost divided by change in Q. So this is going to be divided by marginal product. Okay, and that's Q of output. Okay, so starting out, I could do the product curves. Uh, basically, um, if I were to say that, how do I get the change in output? It's simply the second worker adds, to, if, if one worker produces 10, Two workers produce 22. The second worker adds the difference, right? So 22 divided by, 10, excuse me, 22 minus 10 is 12, and you divide by one. Third worker brings you from 22 to 36, and the difference is 14. Okay, so that's the marginal product of each additional worker, simply the difference between the two, between the new number and the old number, right? And it's divided by one. So you go down here, and the tenth worker doesn't add anything, so the marginal product is zero because it brings it from 90 to 90. Okay. Now, if you take average product, now you are taking total, pro total output divided by total input. So 10 divided by 1 is 10, 22 divided by 2 is 11, and so forth. But the thing is, because of diminishing returns, you find out that this starts to rise, but eventually it starts to fall. Right? And so 90 divided by 9 is 10, 90 divided by 10 is 9. Okay? And this matches over here what you see in your a textbook, right? Now, the cells don't quite line up because the crossing point isn't going to be the same with these discrete cells, but the idea is that basically you have, if marginal product is high, it's going to pull the average up, but eventually the new contributions are below average and it's going to pull the average down. So this, the peak is right where the two curves should cross, okay? You can see diminishing returns over here. Here's the total output. The denominator down here is actually workers, okay? This is the only one of the curves, or these, this set is the only curves that have labor inputs down here. Right? This is the more inputs give you less and less out. You can see that the marginal is falling right? and as the curve gets flatter. Okay? The rest of them has output on the x-axis. Okay? So this is the marginal average rule. Now to get to the cost, we have fixed cost is 50, so this is flat across, and you can see that over here in blue. Variable cost, I did make um, a constant per worker. Okay? So every worker produces 10. So this goes up 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 every time, but we don't divide by workers we're dividing by output and we saw that output is changing so that's where the curve shape comes in now the easiest one is to get total cost that's fixed plus variable so 50 plus 10 is 60 50 plus 20 is 70. now but when you start to get the averages you're going to be dividing by q and q is a moving target right so if you take 50 and I, i've got the excel excel cells here to um uh, basically, you could see that it's divided by 10 every time here or here, or it's divided by 10. So 50 divided by 10 is 5, and then 50 divided by 22 is 2.27. 50 divided by 36 is 1.39 and so forth. So it's, it's 50 divided by an increasing number. And if basically you're spreading that one-time cost across more and more outputs and you're spreading it more thinly, eventually it's going to go to zero. So that's the idea of, of it's the basis of economies of scale, right? You can spread those fixed costs more. 
to, we can do the same thing with average variable cost. Now you think that it would be 10 every time, but really it's because if you look over here, you have 10 over 10, all right, is one, but, but now if you go further, now you have 20 over 22. So you're, you're paying 20 workers, they're producing 22 units of output. A 20, a $30 for 36 units of output, it's less than a dollar. You can see that this starts to fall. All right, but eventually down here, it starts to rise again. It's basically because you're paying $10 more, but you're not getting as much more output because diminishing returns are, are falling. Falling benefits match rising costs. Okay, so that's something that's really important that falling benefits and rising costs are really the same relationship looked at from two different angles. So because you are paying a constant amount for less marginal product, you wind up paying more on average. And so this falls and then it starts to rise. And over here, you would actually see that A, AVC, right, is, I think it's in blue here, um, AVC, well, I was wrong, is in red. You can see that it starts to rise down here. It's in red. Okay, so that's got a U-shaped curve. It falls and then rises. Same thing for ATC. It has falling and then it starts to rise. You can see down here. Now there's two ways to do it. You can add these two columns using one formula. Five plus one is six. All the way down here, adding these. Or you could simply take TC divided by Q. Either way will get you the same number. But you can see the same relationship and then it's going to match the book. All right. Now, um, you can see the four curves. Actually, these are the three average curves together. All right. And basically, you find that AFC is falling and it's approaching zero. You can see a little bit of the curve shape for AVC. And you can see the downward slope and then starting to tick up for ATC. So that would match what you see in the textbook. Okay. Now, marginal cost is the only one that looks a little bit different from the formulas because you're not dividing by L, you're not dividing by Q, you're dividing by changes in Q. So it's changes in total cost. Okay, um, and you can actually see that here it's, it's really 10 every time, but costs are going up 10 per worker, but they're not going up 10 per output. You have to divide by your marginal product, okay? Now, because I have to start here because you have to have something to subtract from, but if you look at the formula, you're basically taking change in cost. This is 10 every time, and then you're dividing it by the marginal product. So it's 10 over the marginal product. If marginal product is rising, this is going to be falling. If marginal product is falling, this is going to be rising because, again, it's the denominator. When the denominator goes up, the number goes down. So marginal cost starts to fall, all right, and then, and then it really rises over here, okay? So here you can see rising marginal costs, and that's directly related to falling marginal product, okay? So you can see it's falling, and then it really rises, okay? So you can actually draw that over here, this purple curve. Is your MC all right? This right here. This is the rising marginal cost, and that that's the derivation of the cost curve I use in other classes, or, or the derivation of the supply curve. So here here are all your cost curves together. You've got the ATC curve, which is starting to have a U shape, but marginal costs are rising, and it's exactly the opposite of this over here, right? Right where they cross is where this turns from falling to rising. Okay, so here's the marginal average rule for cost. Over here, you get the four cost curves you see in the textbook which is the falling um, AFC, keeps falling. You've got the two U shapes for AVC and ATC, and then you've got the rising marginal cost. Over here, this, is, this isn't average, this is total. Fixed cost is flat. Total cost adds up the distance here, so you're really sliding this up. All right? And you can see that they both rise, but it's not straight, because again, you're not divided by workers, you're dividing by quantity of output. And because of falling marginal product, you're getting this upward rise again. All right, so, so this is basically those cost relationships. So I put a PDF up. Um, you can see the numbers. But basically, all I do is I have a relationship between inputs and outputs that captures diminishing returns. And then I make up some costs. And then using that, we're able to derive marginal product, average product. You can have total product here, too. And then I do all the costs, fixed, variable, total, and average. And then finally, I do marginal costs, and we can graph them all. And this is the numbers behind the curves you often see in the textbook.